Hi there, today I'm going to be unboxing a steering wheel stand. So this particular one is by GT Omega Racing. Details are in the description below for anyone thinking of purchasing. So I found an offer on Black Friday for this steering wheel for £99. And then I had a quick look on the internet and found a voucher taking a little bit more off. So at the end of the day the price came to £93. So I thought it was a good price and to give it a go. So let's take a look around the packaging. So the front of the packaging has an image of the actual stand. So on the side we see the following. So obviously their branding and some details on the weight. Coming around the back we see exactly what was on the front. So let's open it up and see what you get in the packaging. Okay, so I've opened up all the packaging now. I've checked the content out just to ensure nothing's missing and I can confirm everything's there. So we can begin assembling this now. So initially what we want to do, we want to flip the frame over and put the four casters onto there. So they just screw down. They just give a base for the actual frame itself. So if I flip it over and four locations, one there, one there, one there and one there. So looking at the instructions here, there are a number of adjustment points. So let me highlight one. So this one here, you can pull it up and down and you can lock it into position by screwing one of the bolts that's down here, there and there. The next one is obviously the adjustment on this. So you can adjust like so. Then you can adjust this as well, the plate here. So you can put your pedals here and then obviously lock it into position by them touching the top there and locking in position at the bottom. And next, the plate here where the steering wheel goes, that can be tilted as well. So you just gotta loosen it here and then obviously put it in the position you want it in. So the way I'm gonna use this actual wheel stand is actually use it with the bean bag, gaming bean bag I have. So I thought size wise it might work out quite well. And if you see here, there you go. So I think you can get a good position on there to quite close as well. So it works out quite, quite well actually. And even if you see your, your leg position, perfect actually. So you can actually lean back and nice and comfortable. So in terms of wheel position, I think this should be sufficient. So I'll lock this into position and in terms of movement on this, I think this is fine down there as well. So I'll lock those in. So I'll use these small screw adjusters for these positions. And I'll use the larger ones for the bottom bit just to get the right positioning. There. So just to note, there's three holes here and there's three positions. So it's not flexible as getting it into a precise position. You do have to obviously get it so the screw on this goes all the way through to the other end. So if I can show just briefly there. And then now what I can do is adjust this plate here. And there you go. Flexible here now. So I can move that like so. So that's a good flat position there. And I can now tighten it up with the Allen key provided. So now, as you can see, the basic frame has been assembled. So it's the attachments now here that I can move on to. The next thing to install is the shifter bracket. So it comes with two attachment packages. So one's there, all the bits up, and another one's down there. The one down there, that would go along the side here. So very straightforward. If I grab the plate and I grab the side piece, and it's just a matter of screwing it directly onto there. And then what we do, we can just attach it onto the frame like this. If I can show, there you go. And then this holes here, we can attach it onto. Let's tighten these pieces up. And there you go, now it's attached firmly on there. Obviously the nut goes there, the screw goes through this side and just two screws for the bottom plate here. And very nice and firm. Let's 
attach the next attachment then. This is a long pole here and you can see there's some rubber on this end and this end slots straight in here like so. You've got two screw holes here and looking at the instructions that's actually to hold it in position with these screws and you've got adjusters at the top to help turn it. So we'll put those two in. There you go, that's in now. Next, we take this piece and that goes in this way into here. You can use this adjuster to tighten it in position to the height you want. And then obviously, once you've got it adjusted, just tighten it up. Next, we take the plate here, two screws and tighten it in place. It sits like so. So the plate now goes into this position and you use the screws with a slightly larger head and then use the Allen key to tighten that in position. There you go, that's it. So the frame's fully assembled now, as you can see. And just to note the areas here, I'm gonna remove one of them, just need to decide which one I'm gonna do. The height, depending on where I'm gonna put the shifter. So I may put it down there, that might be more comfortable, but I'll have to see once the other components are on there. I can put the pedals on now and the wheel together with the shifter and let me show how to do that. First of all, let's install the actual pedals. Got my G29 pedals here, and if I put them in position, what's nice about this, you've got some slots here, and the cable can easily come out of there. Once it's in the correct position, you can just lift this bracket at the bottom up and lock it into place. Avoid a slippage, and it stays firmly in position. And there you go, that's completed now. Next, we've got our steering wheel installation. So I've loosened the brackets underneath, slots into position like so. We can just tighten it up. There you go. That's now firmly in position. Finally, we have the shifter position. I think I'll go with this one for now, in terms of brackets and where to install. And that can easily be placed into position and we'll tighten it up all the way around. And that's it. And now we'll just lower it so it's at the lowest position. And there you go. I think that's sufficient for the installation. Next, we should do some cable management on this. Obviously, we don't want the cables just hanging like so. So it doesn't come with anything or any mechanism for cable management. But I've got some Velcro straps and I can use those. First one is the USB cable. I'll keep that to the side like so, and we can just Velcro it in, keep it right to the edge, like this. So what I'll do, I'll get a few more pieces of Velcro, and I'll have this coming round like this, and then obviously plugging into the steering wheel, and then same for the actual shifter cable. I'll just tidy that up so it's a bit more neater. There we go, everything's attached now, you can see Got Velcro there, there and there, and the USB cable just coming off the end of that. Firmly secure, as you can see here as well. Frame does wobble a little bit, I just need to adjust the bottom there, and a little bit of movement there as well. Let's position it up and turn on our PlayStation. Okay, so I've made some adjustments on the frame just to make it more comfortable when I'm on the bean bag and comfort wise, very nice, and gameplay wise as well, very good. Adds that realism to it, so having the frame is a better position to play in, more of a comfortable, more realistic driving position. Okay, so here we have the frame in action with the Logitech G29 steering wheel attached to it. In terms of comfort, it does feel very nice. I have obviously made some adjustments. I've taken the other bracket away there, and this seems to be sufficient in terms of positioning of the shifter. Now, I was a bit dubious with the bean bags, thinking how comfortable would it be, and it is very comfortable actually with this. So one of the advantages of having a frame like this is the fact that you can fold it away after you finish using it. So if you take all this off, take the bolts at the bottom off, you can fold it away. So quite nice. So you could put it somewhere at the side of a room or even underneath a bed, for instance. So 
I like the flexibility of owning something like this, so you don't have to have it out all the time, like a full size frame. So with a full size frame, you have to leave it out. Obviously, it's difficult to pack away anywhere. So there you go, hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this particular racing frame. Details in the description below. Thanks for viewing and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.